Hey guys, I hope you all had a really good week. This is what I'm looking at this week. So as you can probably all identify, this is a laptop screen. This is a 15.6 inch LED screen. Um, I have two of these and two laptops that are not working. And I have one here that is working. So our usual fix for when the backlight goes in a screen is just to simply replace the screen. But I've always been interested to see if I could actually sort out what is wrong with you know the backlight circuit when it breaks so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the working one I'm going to look at it in detail see if I can work out how the backlight circuit works and then use the knowledge garnered from that to fix the two that I have that have the backlight faults so let's take some pictures of the board zoom in and have a look around and see if we can learn something so this is a picture of the circuit board on the back of that uh, LCD LED monitor um, I've taken this picture with my iPhone and my light box so as you can see if we zoom in this is 100% right here and it looks pretty good given how small that is this board if you've ever taken out a laptop screen this board is tiny so to try and get the level of detail is quite difficult on it you can see that some sections come out better than others depending where the image is focused I think the key to it is to get straight on with the camera and take it in smaller sections because you tend to lose focus out to the edges if you take like wide shots but this is the picture that we're going to be working with right here so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the connector and I'm going to take some measurements right there now the circuit board that's on this screen obviously is not generic uh, they are different on all of the different screens but in the same way that we try and sort of learn the working principles of a motherboard and a laptop I'm going to try and see how the backlight works on this one and then maybe we can extrapolate how it works on the other two which will be slightly different so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to introduce my digital multimeter in the 20 volts DC range and then I'm going to place my black probe to ground and then very carefully start working through the pins of this 30 pin connector now you need a really small probe for doing this. I wouldn't even try and do this with a regular probe because you'll just end up um, crossing two of the pins and possibly blowing something. But I needed my microscope to do this as well. But what I did was I just got the red probe here. Just one pin, take the measurement. Next pin, take the measurement. Next pin, very carefully take the measurement. And you work your way through all of these pins right here. And when I did that, I found that we had... 15.99 volts on these four pins right here uh, we had 3.3 volts on these two pins right here 2.5 volts on this pin here and 3.3 on these two right here so there are the voltages that come on to this 30 pin connector right here so there are the voltages coming onto the board I want to go and find a, which chip is controlling the LEDs because like I said, this it's purely the backlight fault that we want to work out what is happening on the other screens. So I want to see what chip is controlling the LEDs on this and we'll take it from there. So we're going to start scrolling across and take a look at the ICs. So this is the full board that you can see right here. So the detail of that has actually come out quite well. If we look down here, you can see this cable right here and that's the one that carries the voltage to the backlights and as you can see there's four lines coming from this back to this chip right here so that makes me think that this is our little backlight driver right here so I'm gonna check out that model number so it's let's zoom into 100% again so it's a 6903A. So let's see if we can find a data sheet for that and see if we can work out what's happening. And this is the data sheet for the ANX6903. Uh, I was correct, it is the LED driver. It's a four channel LED driver. It boosts converter output voltage up to 43 volts. So that's, you know, whatever is going to the LEDs on the positive side is going to be well less than that anyway it's a wide input voltage it's got pulse width modulation dimming it's got all sorts of protection in there open and short detection on the LED strings it's got short circuit over voltage protection over current protection over temperature protection these things are all 
basically the design so that they don't go on fire so there's a lot of protection in there to save that uh, save that from happening these are the pinouts right here that's great that will be useful in trying to analyze it and see how it works and there's a description of it right here which I'm not going to go through fully unfortunately with this data sheet there is no sample configuration um, so I'm not sure what we're going to do about that the data sheet is literally this page and I've searched and I cannot find any more information on this but I'm going to keep looking and just persist with it and see if I can find any sort of sample configuration even that maybe somebody might have uploaded on a forum or something like that I was very fortunate to find a sample circuit for this chip on the internet I've had to touch it up because it was very low resolution but I think I have it to a point here that it'll at least work so I can show on this video what it's doing so we have our VN up here so that's probably our 15.99 volts it's coming uh, across a capacitor to stabilize the voltage this is onto our VN We've got an inductor up here and a diode here so this is the part of the circuit that boosts that input voltage and as we saw earlier that can be boosted up to 43 volts if required um, so that's what's powering our LEDs then the ground side of our LEDs there's a separate grounding of each uh, strip of LEDs in CH1, CH2, CH3, CH4 um, what else have we got? We've got our over voltage protection here which is just a resistor ladder um, we, on this side we've got pulse width modulation so that's a signal to tell how bright we want our LEDs we've got an enable pin as there is on a lot of these so that tells it either on or off that's probably 3.3 volts I'm not sure what the I set and RT are for grounds are here I'm not sure what the comp is for either if anybody knows you're welcome to put it in the comments down below um, but that's a sample circuit for this chip so what I'm going to do next is I have this chip right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark each of these pins with uh, wh what it does okay so that's the next step we're going to do you really need to appreciate how small these chips are and for me to try and get each of the pinouts written on top of this chip was very difficult but this is what I managed anyway so hopefully you can see all of those so starting from pin 1 down in the corner I marked them all out as they were on the data sheet the significant ones I'm going to comment on here so this is, these are for the channels of the LEDs as we saw on our other schematic these are the grounding pins essentially for our strips of LEDs and we have four separate strips of LEDs and they go to those four channel pins right there we have our pulse width modulation right here our enable pin here, our voltage in, of course, that powers the chip. We have our LX right here, and as you can see, there's an inductor and a diode right here, as would be expected. As you can see here, we've got our inductor and our diode. And then after the diode is where we should be seeing our boosted voltage. So that corresponds to this right here. So we should be measuring here to see our output voltage. Uh, we've also got our grounds and our over voltage protection I've marked in the other pins but um, they're not really of real significance I think so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try now with this laptop powered on and with the screen connected and a backlight on I'm gonna take measurements to see what these pins should be reading when the laptop is turned on and the backlight is on so once again with my digital multimeter and 20 volts DC I place my black probe to ground which is one of the capacitors right there and I very carefully once again because these are tiny went around pin by pin with my red probe and took measurements for each and every one of the pins on this chip so what I found when I did that was with the significant ones V in I measured as being 15.6 volts now that's our input supply for this chip so obviously if that's not there nothing is going to happen there is also an enable pin this is essentially our on off so I measured 3.3 when this was switched on so that's obviously 3.3 when it's on and then lower probably zero if you're telling the chip to stay switched off 
PWM is pulse width modulation. Now, obviously, that's a sort of a generic term in electronics, but when you see that in one of these LED drivers, it's basically telling you that it's the dimming pin. So what I found in this was that there was 2.5 volts on this. I'm not sure what happens with this. Like, does it come in at 1.2 if the brightness is less, and 3.3 if it's, uh, you know, full brightness? I will check that out at a later stage. Maybe on one of the ones that I'm trying to fix. On the LX, this again is where our output goes to our is our LX right here. So this goes out to the diode and then on the other side of the diode it's uh, boosted hopefully when it's working. Um, so what I measured here was I measured 15.6 at this point but on the boosted part of the circuit I measured 25.6. So let's just get a look at that. So right here on those two pins for LX right there I measured 15.6 volts but on the other side of the diode where that voltage is boosted I measure 25.6 volts. So this is how it looks on a working circuit. Quickly doing a synopsis of this once again we have our input voltage which is 15.6 volts to power the chip. It's enabled 3.1 volts to turn it on. It's got a signal at 2.5 volts and pulse width modulation to tell it how bright the screen should be and when boosted it's got 25.6 volts and those 25.6 volts are fed to our four strips of LEDs. At this point we've got overviews to how this LED driver chip works and hopefully there's similar LED drivers on the other two laptops that I'm going to try and sort out the backlight issues with. But one other thing that would be useful would be if we had some means of injecting voltage into those LEDs separately and working out if those four strips are actually working. So what I wanted to do next was get a look at the connector. So the connector that connects to the screen looks like this and obviously this is, you know, I've zoomed this up, I'm not sure what the scale is, but this is tiny on the board as well. So it's very difficult to work with these but what I managed to do was again take some DC me measurements from this. So the DC measurements that I took from these pins right here were as follows. I hope you can see that that's as small as I could get the, or that's as big as I could get them and still make them legible. So what you're seeing here is here the bottom three pins are 25.6 volts. So this is where we are getting our feed right here. I checked and there's continuity with those three pins and this side of the diode right here. So we're getting our 25.6 coming in on those three pins right there. So these are going off to the LEDs and then each of the strips of LEDs has its own return path. And these are CH1, CH2, CH3 and CH4. So one way that we could possibly check them individually is by injecting voltage in here and providing a ground to each of them right here. So I'm going to demonstrate how I did that just to check each of the strips individually. So with my laptop now turned off I'm going to see if we can use my desktop power supply to inject voltage into each of the LED strips and see if they are working. Now obviously we know they're working on this laptop but this is a technique I want to see if it works and then we're going to use it on the laptops that have no backlight at all. So what I'm going to do first is introduce my desktop power supply which is this right here. On that I'm going to put up 25.6 volts but the important thing here is to limit the current particularly with LEDs. So I need to set a current limit there of 0 0.01 amps or 10 milliamps. So what I do then is I connect to the common positive that feeds down to the LEDs which I've marked here as VLED. We were, we were reading 25.6 volts right here so I'm going to inject 25 volts right there and then we can check each of the other strips by grounding them one by one. So I'm going to pick channel 1 which is the first strip of LEDs and connect that to my black pin of my power supply. So when I did that I was able to check the first set of LEDs and they came on. I then moved this to the second channel 2 channel 3, channel 4 and all of the LEDs came on. So this is a safe way of identifying whether each of my LED strips are working or not. And that concludes our quick tour of the backlight circuit 
of a 15.6 inch laptop screen. This is from a Toshiba from maybe about oh maybe about five years old. Like I said I've got a couple of these other ones that I want to fix so that gives me just an idea as to how it works, what I should be looking for, what voltage should be coming in, should the, what value should the enable pin have. So I'm hoping that this will help me and you in troubleshooting the backlight of a screen instead of having to throw them out all the time. I've got two that I have to fix so they are likely to be in my follow-up videos. Please let me leave any comments that you have below and I'll see you again in the next one. Thank you.